everyone, it's Tuesday the 23rd of June and it's 9.15 in the evening and I've got some updates on my model railway. So I'm going to start with what I feel is the most boring bit which is a, uh, an issue I was having with one of my points. I'll just show you where it was. It's actually right over the back there. <laughs> Basically the first set of points on my layout to bring the trains into the sidings. That's the one that was being a problem. Um, some of my rolling stock was derailing when it hit it. They were getting, uh, I've got a uh, yeah, example here, they were getting as far as the frog and instead of going around on the spur to go into the sidings, like they should, I actually put down Put that in the right position, so it come up and come up this rail and then go off onto the sidings. Yeah! Apart from, the first two or three wagons might go over this fine, and say the fourth one might decide to try and go straight and derail the rest of the train. So I took that point out, because I re-gauged the wheels on most of my stock now anyway, or I've replaced them, one or the other. Um, and it was still doing it. So I took the point out because I was having some power problems anyway. There's a bit of track that went between the spur and the crossover track. That was giving me some connection issues. Um, so I took it out. Took the point into the lounge. Sat at the computer and I was just checking it over. Had some rolling stock in there that I was just gently rolling over it just to see if I could see what was happening. And that's when I found out that the wheels when I got to the frog was for some reason trying to skip and go straight on rather than follow the rest of the train around onto the sidings. I'm not sure if that was a siren I, siren I just heard in the background or the seagulls. Anyway, I wouldn't be surprised if that was a siren because there was a motorbike racing up and down here a minute ago so he's prob probably been pulled over or something. Anywho, so I couldn't actually find anything wrong with the point or my wheel, so I have no idea. All I know is the point was shorter than this one and the spur, I don't know if I'm calling that the right thing, but basically the spur piece was at a bit more of a tighter angle than this. Maybe the angle is what my rolling stock wasn't liking. Um, but I ended up having to change the point because when I took it out and I was playing with it, I ended up mushing the... Uh, fish plates, the connecting plates, and I tried to get them off but they were soldered on because I got a lot of this track from my stepdad when he ripped up his model layout and started again. He had a lot of track left over and a whole bunch of points so and as he uses DCC he tends to solder his joints. Anyway, I desoldered one, fine, got it off the second one, which was on the inner track, the short bit, I was having trouble with and I was trying to pull the uh, fish plate off and ended up pulling the whole piece of track off and basically making the whole point redundant. So I had to put a new one in and like I said, the only replacements I had are these longer ones. Um, so I did have to make some adjustments over that corner. I had to cut back the curve by about an inch to get it to fit in the gap and change the um, little section of connection track, the one that I had the fault on as well, just to get it to meet up with the uh, crossover track. So I killed two birds with one stone because I've actually driven on three trains. They've actually derailed at the minute because I've been banging around on this layout and doing things. So yeah, all three of these I drove on with three different locomotives. Um, I had a little pug on this one. I had my 08 on the recovery crane and my Thomas 37 on the uh, indices there. And I all drive on fine. I say that, that's not strictly true actually. This has got two trucks in this one up the other end, I don't know if you can see them, just after the two overturned milk tankers. Um, there was three, I took one out because it was being an absolute pain. And uh, I think I figured out why. Here it is. Now I think we're all aware of Thomas the Tank Engine and they, in that show they had the naughty trucks. Well, I've got some 
rolling stock from a Thomas the Tank engine set. I've got one of the trucks and Annie and Clarabelle. But this one, this naughty little truck here, you see he's got his face on the front there, I hope. Do I need a bit of light this side? Oh, that's better. That's not so dark. Right. I've spaced the wheels because my stepdad loaned me his uh, wheel gauge and it still derails on the new point over the back there. So yeah, this one is literally being a multi-truck. But other than that, so far, for in motorbikes it's bloody cars racing up and down there tonight. It's not even a Friday night, that's quite scary. Anyway, so yeah, I've got all of those to drive on, so as far as I know, everything is now actually working, apart from the um, section of track that goes down to the two loco sheds down there. So, one change I have made, I'm actually going to uh, bring you this way a little bit, so you can go a bit closer. There we go. Yeah, one change I've made, I've put the single loco shed down here as well, whereas I was going to put it up this end, I just thought, that isn't going to look right, that's going to look stupid, so I put it down here with the two road loco shed, which I have built. It's not best, well not the best I should say, my chimney on the little office here is twisted, so I'm going to remake that at some point, and I had to take some trim from the big train station I had because I didn't plan to use that train station anyway so I stole some trim just to tidy up some bits so a couple of extra bits I've still got to tidy up but one of the reasons I built it was because I was completely redesigning this as you can see I've actually got a siding here which I've still got to put some more nails in because uh, I got to thinking well in the repair area like that they must have a siding to stand stock on while it awaits for parts to arrive and whatnot. Because <clears throat> no doubt they're going to have other stuff that's got to go in there to be repaired so they can't just leave you know things in there for weeks on end. They wouldn't, it wouldn't happen in real life would it on a real preserved railway or any real railway I suppose. I suppose anything that can't be fixed would have to be stored somewhere. So uh, <clears throat> I've added that siding in, so I do need at least one more, two more buffers, I think. But the problem is with that old track, I'm going to have to move that on, I guess it's in the way. Um, it is basically live up to this last point, which I can't quite see it on camera. It's somewhere here near the glue, just before the glue, it's here. It's live up to there, but this whole yard is still dead, and I don't know why. Um, I'm a complete noob to this, even though my stepdad's sort of been building them on and off for, well, since he's been with my mum actually, over 10 years now, <clears throat> but things happen and he's had to dismantle a few over the years, so, anyway, yeah, so, I'm not sure what I've got to do there, I've either done something wrong, something isn't connected, or I've got to change something, so I'm going to hopefully look into that tomorrow, actually. I'm going to get into cans of paint. I might restore another Matchbox car tomorrow as well. Oh shit, I won't do that. So, that's where I am. Well, actually, you know what? Because I haven't glued either of these sheds down yet. That was off its markings anyway. Here it is, a bit of a closer view of it. I did learn that PVA glue won't hold in the plastic windows, but it's just as well I've got a selection of various glues. I've got some UHU, or UHU glue as I like to call it. All purpose glue that I just used a few blobs on. It takes a while for it to dry, but it is good glue. I'm not that bit, I'm a bit on the wonk there. And that bit roof there is sunk, but I'm not that worried about it. It's a preserved railway with old buildings. They're not going to look in mint condition, are they? That's the, uh, that's the way I'm looking at it anyway. Right, now I need to back you up again. 
So, there is something I've got to change at the front here with all my controls. Well, there's two things I want to change. One, this, because I want a, a dual controller so I don't have to have two separate controllers. I just think it's going to look tidier with the one dual controller in there. And the other one is, I've got to get rid of this and make the point switch box, which is what this one's for, the points, in a bigger one. Because I've actually added, I think, two, three more points over there. So, I'm going to need a bigger switch box. <laughs> I'm glad I bought the bigger ones now. That was uh, pretty much one of the ulterior motives to buying two big ones, as well as two more of these from the same seller. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure I could find another... Really? I'm not kidding. That's the third time that fire engine has been out in the past hour. I'm not joking either. Well, I say been out. I saw it returning to the station when I was on my way home from Mum's. But when I got home, it left the station on lights and sirens. And it's now gone out again. It is their training night, so I don't know if they're doing something involving training or if it's genuine 999 calls they're responding to because the live feed doesn't work at the minute. Uh, <laughs> it's been sort of working on and off all through lockdown. But of course, because no one's at the office, they, uh, they're having some problems keeping it running. Right. The more interesting bit, in my opinion, anyway. Let's try and come out of the way. I'll see if I can bring the camera in a bit closer. That's a bit too close. <laughs> right. Hang on a minute. Maybe if I bring the camera more up to my eye height, I can see the screen a bit better. So, two trains on the track. This one is my new one, newest one to the collection. It is a vintage Triang Pullman. Got from a friend as a non-runner. Well, it'd been sitting in his loft, you know, and it's a case of it ran when it was put up there. <laughs> but naturally, spending many years up in the loft, it did need some attention. But, I hope it's going to play ball now. I've got to go in the wrong way. I always do that. She is working. Slows down a bit on the bends. Ooh. She slowed right down on that bend. But yeah, she's, uh, she does sort of judder like that in the bends as well. Especially that one. And that one on this front corner. It's not so bad now that she's warmed up a bit. I'm actually wondering if I've got an issue on them two corners because it's slowing down on the back two corners for some reason. It doesn't bother me, it's still going around the track. But um, I did change the wheels on this. These are not the original wheels, being an old Triang. So I've actually upgraded it to these nice newer metal ones. I don't really look the part on it but it does go around the track better. I think the issue is actually with the motor wheels because they are still the original trying ones and the flanges on the wheels are too deep. So you've got this little flange on the wheels here. And on a lot of triang stock, especially the vintage stuff, they're too deep for the modern track. So you'll find that they, if it does go around the track, it's going to make a lot of noise and they may not go through things like your points or your crossover tracks. Which is what I was having the problem with with these coaches here. Because these are vintage triangles. I've actually got my uh, Airfix 4F Fowler on this at the minute. But I decided to um, check the wheel gauging on these and they were all off. They were way too narrow, which explains why they were bouncing over the points and crossover track. 
Now, it is still noisy. I think this one's being a pain in the bum. I might actually take that off. I'm going to try and run it. Bit of wheel slip there. Yeah, that one bounced again. So I think I'm going to have to re-gauge the wheels. One problem I'm having, because these wheels are old, I re-gauge them to the right width with this, and they go around the corners and they squeeze in again. They're not staying where I put them, so I may have to dab a bit of glue. The rumbling noise, I can live with that. There's that motorbike again. Fun fact, because of him whizzing around like that, I've already restarted this video once. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's uh, just take this off. It might actually go around the track a bit better with three on, but got four because I've got one of these which is like a coach with the guard section and I don't know the proper name for this I've actually got two spare of these which I'm willing to sell because I am going to need those yeah, these wheels are rolling okay but yeah I can see with one trip around the track that two of the wheels have done it again I don't know if you can see it but right there you should be able just to see a little gap right in the middle not on that one there should actually be a gap there. I did space all these earlier. Now what did I do with my tool? You saw me. I literally had it in my hand a minute ago. <laughs> Here it is. But look. See it won't go through the wheels now. So going around the track that has closed up. What I might actually do is try these on the outer circuit. Slightly different... Um, curve radius so if these work better on the outer circuit then that's what I'll use these on uh, right let's have a look what we've got next see this one's done it as well that one's closed in that moves really easy though so it might pay me just to squirt some super glue in there and see if I can hold it in place but yeah I've got two Ordinary coaches. He says. And the uh, restaurant car. Which is a bit of a damaged window on one corner, I think. Yeah. I can't remember where I got all of these from. I think I bought some. Two of these, I think. It was either one or two of these I got from a car boot sale last year. And the rest, if I remember rightly, I got from a from eBay, yet yeah, all four of these wheels have closed up again. And I've got a funny feeling that it's mostly to do with the um, curve radius on that inner track. So yeah, I've got like a full, well, a full train set, I suppose, because I've got the restaurant car, I've got a couple of coaches. Like I said, that other car I've got there, or coach, I've got another two of them. I didn't realise I had three of them. I thought I had mostly coaches. Um, it's got guard written on the door. Yeah, they all have. On that centre set of doors. It's got guard written on it. That one's probably the oldest when you look at the couplers. It's the only one I've got with that style of coupler. Works fine with Hornby. I'm guessing that is a really, really early one. Probably earlier than this one, because that's got the more recognisable Hornby couplers on it. Although it is trying. Although that yellow has got a funny colour after all these years. So, yeah, I am willing to sell these, because I really don't need three of these. I only want enough for that set. And four coaches is pretty much the max for both circuits. So, yeah, I don't mind... Uh, Parting with these two. So, I'm going to put those there. But I would like to sell them so I can put money back into this. 
um, which brings me on to other things, but I'm going to talk about that in another video. <laughs> right. You know what? Let's take my Pullman off. Oh, by the way, in case you wondered what I had to do with the Pullman, I actually dismantled the motor partially so I could clean the wheels better because I find it's easier to do that. Um, cleaned up the motor brushes. It was completely dead because I think the capacitor thing that they put on these, a suppressor cap to stop interference, or stop these interfering with TVs, not so much a problem these days, but back in the day with the old CRTs, they used to interfere a lot apparently. Um, that was just dead, it wasn't working because I bypassed it and this sprung into life. So, yeah, it's all uh, working hunky dory now. Right, I'm not going to use my Farrella. I want to use a different loco. Hmm. I don't know which one to use, my Scotsman or my Southern Britannia. Scotsman. Britannia wins. Because I do like this one. Bought a spares or repairs from eBay. And uh, she runs beautifully. Let me make sure she does run. Yeah. <laughs> right, so let's put these in order on here. They've all had their wheels gapped again. They do run a bit stiff. I have to say, these old style triangle bearings are not brilliant. See? They don't free wheel very well. The other coach on. I mean, I could mess around. My face actually on camera, not quite. I could mess around. Um, you know, replacing the wheels, that means replacing or fitting little metal bearings in, it's a lot of faffing about, but if I can actually just get them to run around the track fine, I'm happy. on the point a little bit. Yep, I've had a derailment. That one bounced off. So, it's fine going through the crossover track. They would run so much better if I changed the wheels. I might do that one day, but at least I know I can actually get them to go around the track. Oh, that one's come off as well. I wonder why I could hear that rumble. get some uh, more modern coaches or at least coaches that have had the wheels changed at some point. What if my Pullman will go around that inside loop? Shall we find out? I'll just take my uh, 4F off. 4F off. Sounds like I'm swearing doesn't it? Oh, that's what I forgot to mention with this uh, train as well. I've got a spare homemade dummy unit. Yeah, 
That's a spare homemade dummy unit. It used to be a motorised unit, but what my friend has probably done, he's bolted these on. Very well, I might add, it does work really well. As you can see, this is where the motor should be, but he's put a plate in there so he could fix an ordinary bogey to it. I don't know if the motor broke. I don't know if this is something he acquired that was already broken, so he just done something to fix it. No idea. Fun fact, this is the first time this one's been on this loop. Now that is one problem with that motor, it rocks back and forth and sometimes tilts off the track. I think I've got that on the track, it's hard to... Yeah. Maybe. No, I'm sure that's on the track. See if I go through the crossover track. Absolutely fine. That's good to know that I can use that one on both circuits. I'll let that come round again and I'll stop it. And believe it or not, that was actually a full speed on that controller. Really? Sorry about that guys, I've got my foot on the tripod. Cat and big feet tonight. Well that's good. That uh, runs on both. And technically this does, but I'm still having problems with those wheels. I bet what you like when these went through. Yep. That one's narrowed up. What if I should? Try putting some super glue on those just to see if uh, I can hold these in place. I've got the glue, I've got the spray, I might try that tonight because I think that's what's happening. It's going into the curves and it's squeezing the wheels shut because they're, um, they're not holding like they should. That one is okay but I don't think that one bounced too much anyway. Nope, that one's closed up again. Seems to have closed up more than this one. Yep, yeah, so is that one. Well, as you can see, it's quite easy for me to um, space some of these. Which just shows that they're not gripping the metal axle as tight as they should. Oh, hello. That one went back by its own, by itself. Maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe this. Yeah, that one, for some unknown reason, is springing back by itself. I don't know. I'll have a go with that tomorrow. I'm going to be here all day tomorrow, so. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Progress at least. I've just got that track issue with, not, with that section not being powered to fix, and I think that's actually the only issue with the track itself. I mean, this isn't a track issue, this is a rolling stock issue to fix. So, yeah, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.